Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. My name is Sava, and today we are starting something that might well become a large series of videos in the future on econometrics. And we are starting with investigating the Dickey Fuller test and the augmented Dickey Fuller test, one of the most commonly used and frequently applied statistical tests in time series analysis. And uh, you might want to ask, what's all the hassle about? Why does one need the Dickey Fuller test? Well, it's one of the easiest ways to identify whether a time series, so some variable that changes with time, has a unit root. That is, that if this time series is non-stationary. And it might all sound like a bunch of heavy-handed terms to you, but non-stationarity is something that plagues time series analysis throughout the time econometrics existed. Why would you need stationary time series, that is, the series where the mean and variance are independent through time? Well, it is required by the assumptions of many time series analysis techniques, such as factor autoregression or Granger causality tests and much, much more. So before you start analyzing time series from that angle, you need to determine whether the series you're investigating are stationary in the first place. And that's where the Dickey Fuller test helps. So what is the unit root? What does the Dickey Fuller test try to identify? A uh, unit root is basically when uh, future observations of the variable are dependent on the past realizations with a coefficient of 1, or very close to 1. Therefore, one can test that type of relationship by differencing some series, so calculating the deltas from one observation to other observation, and then regressing those on the lagged variable, so lagged levels of a particular time series. And uh, if the coefficient that you will obtain will be equal to zero or larger than zero, then you can infer that the unit root is present. And uh, if the coefficient that you obtain is significantly negative, then you can be reasonably sure that there is no unit root there. So without further ado, let's crack onto doing some Dickey Fuller tests in Excel and later on as a bonus at the end of the video I'll show to you how to apply those in advanced statistical software that is in eViews 11. But first of all let's get down to our spreadsheets. First of all we need to calculate the difference of our variable and as you might have guessed I've picked the returns of S&P 500 as the variable of interest. We might want to model the returns using some vector autoregressive technique or decide what Granger causes the returns to then figure out some trading strategy. So that's a pretty reasonable place to start our investigation. So the first difference of the returns would be just the return today minus the return yesterday, and we can apply it for the whole sample. Then we would need to figure out what is the lagged value of the return and here it will be just return in the previous day and we can just drag it all the way down then we'll need to figure out the time trend for one of the specifications of the unit root test so starting with one then entering two and then bottom right fifteen all the way down and we've got enough input to figure out three particular forms of the digger filler test the first form is the easiest, is when you assume that there is no drift and no time trend in your initial series. That means it's a pure random walk with no drift. So to estimate the Dicker Fuller test in that setting, you'll just need to regress the difference over here on the lagged variable over here. So to do that, we need just to select a two cell uh, array and uh, apply the linest function and input our y's, our differences as the dependent variable and our lagged returns as our independent variable. 
as we don't want any drift to come into the equation at that stage let's put zero where we want a constant and as we want to estimate the standard error as well let's put one where we have stats so that it doesn't report the coefficients only it also reports additional statistics and when we close the bracket and uh, enforce the formula using shift control enter and we see that the coefficient is negative so far away from zero in the right direction to the left of zero and the standard error is reasonably small so we can calculate the t stat by just dividing the coefficient by the respective standard error and get minus 36 and you might be tempted to apply the regular t distribution here to figure out so the difference of this coefficient from zero is indeed statistically significant but as it has been proven by Dickey and Fuller originally the traditional uh, t distribution is inapplicable here because first of all the distribution is slightly different and second as you are testing for the significance of difference from zero in the left direction not only on the right direction so we have to use the critical values that have been calculated by Dicke Fuller way back in the 70s and we can see that the uh, critical value for the 1% level of significance when there is no trend is minus 3.43 which is well below the t stat that we have obtained so we can be extremely sure that at this setting when we assume no drift and no trend there is indeed no unit root in the returns so we can proceed to our modeling but if you are more curious you can also estimate other forms of the Dicke Fuller test for example the Dicke Fuller unit root test with drift to do that we need to select a 2x2 two two, um, array in, on our spreadsheet and apply the Linus function just as we did previously with the same dependent variable and the same independent variable but here we need to add a constant that is our drift our intercept and we also need to report the standard errors and uh, applying the formula with shift control enter we get very similar results in terms of the coefficient and the respective standard error we can see that the drift is positive however it doesn't impact the result in terms of the coefficient of interest much so we can also figure out the t stat it's even larger in magnitude and is still negative so comparing it with the respective critical value we can um, infer that still regardless of whether we include drift or not the Dicke Fuller test reinforces the finding that there is no unit root and we can proceed to our vector autoregressive models or Granger causality tests finally for the simple um, unit root test of Dicke Fuller without any augmentations we can also perform the estimation with a time trend and that's why we bothered uh, constructing this series after all to do that we'll need to select a 3 by 2 array here because we'll have both the drift and the trend as well as the coefficient that we are interested in testing for significance and we need to apply Linus again and the dependent variable as you might have guessed gonna stay the same but for the independent variables we'll have two arrays the uh, time trend which is going to be one of the variables and uh, will still remain with the lagged return as our main independent variable which will generate that type of a coefficient and we need a constant because we need the drift here as well and we want standard errors reported so we close the brackets uh, and enforce the formula with shift control enter and here we'll see that even the inclusion of the time trend didn't change the results much so we can copy this formula again to figure out the t stat we can see that the result is very similar to the t stats obtained previously but here we need to compare this t stat with a different critical value as Dicke Fuller critical values differ for instances when we don't include a trend and when we include a trend so here we have to compare it with minus 3.96 but still with uh, a very uh, substantial cushion we can determine that statistical significance is still there as our t stat comfortably exceeds minus 3.96 in terms of magnitude so all those three tests comfortably allowed us to infer that s p 500 returns indeed don't have a unit root um, another uh, framework that you can use to test for unit root presence is the so-called augmented Dicke Fuller tests so what do we use what do we include in the model to augment it 
Well, we include the lags of the respective differences so that we can account for additional uh, autocorrelation structure, autoregressive structure, and uh, have a more robustness in our results, basically. So here, let's include two lags. You can include as many lags as you want, up to a reasonable amount. So here, let's consider two lags. So the first lag would be just the difference in the previous day, and the second lag will be the difference two days ago. And now we can bottom right click this formula down, bottom right click this formula down, and apply the augmented Dickey Fuller test with two lags. To do that, we'll need to select a five by two, uh, cell selection now, as we have two lags, uh, our main dependent variable, and also drift and time trend. They didn't go anywhere. So now we apply the Linus function, and here we need to be careful as we reduced our sample size, and we can no longer use those two observations as they were sacrificed to generate those lags. So we can only start from the third day onwards, as that's the first day when we have all of the needed variables to perform our estimation. So those will be our dependent variables and our independent variables are those four columns. And then we need to include the constant, we need to include the drift, and we also need to report the standard errors. So pressing shift control enter, we are eager to look at the results and we see that again they are very similar to what we have previously obtained and calculating the t-stat for the coefficient of interest, we can see that it's slightly smaller, but still it well exceeds the critical value of minus 3.96. It means that even in a setting where you have a reasonable dumbbell of lags in an augmented Dickey Fuller test framework, we are still overwhelmingly confident that there is no unit root in the process that generates S&P 500 returns. And again, you need to check for that carefully before you apply any vector autoregression frameworks or any Granger causality tests. And now, as a bonus, I'll show you how to carry out those types of tests in advanced statistical software, which is EVUs. That's the statistical software of choice for me uh, in particular. So here we've got a work file where I have uploaded the values of the S&P 500 and the respective returns. So if we double click on this series, you'll get a very familiar spreadsheet like representation of the data. And uh, here you can apply the unit root test in actually three clicks without generating any additional columns, without applying Linus, all of that. To do that, we'll just need to click on view, select unit root tests, standard unit root test, and here we can specify what we actually need. So here, let's figure out um, the specification that we want. First of all, let's compare our result with the special uh, case when there is no drift and no intercept. So first of all, we need none of those, so no trend, no intercept. And we test for unit root in level. So level data means that we just take the returns, not difference in returns as our main variable. And here we can select the number of flags for the augmented Dickey Fuller procedure. What is handy in eViews is that it can select the optimal number of lags for you based on uh, various information criteria. But let's just specify that the number of lags is zero for now. And if, as we click OK, we have exactly the same result as we obtained in Excel over here. The T stat is minus 36.5. 1769 up to four decimal places. So we can see that the two um, methods are extremely consistent in generating those um, results. And we can also see that um, the statistic generates a p value, so the probability that there is a unit root and the probability is virtually zero. So we can be extremely comfortable with that. And now we can also uh, apply another unit root statistic, for example, including the intercept. So now we'll compare it with this finding. And we see that the result is again uh, exactly the same and we comfortably pass the 1% uh, uh, confidence threshold and the probability that the uh, process has a unit root is again virtually zero. Then 
um, I mean, just clicking uh, various options, we can perform all types of unit roots tests, all types of unit root tests that you want. Here we can uh, test for trend and intercept both with zero lags in the augmented DK fuller procedure. And again, we have exactly the same result. Now to select the number of lags, that's what um, eViews is really handy with. We can first check that the two lag model gives the same result and indeed it does. And again, we comfortably pass the uh, required threshold. But what's also handy is that you can again use the information criterion minimization to figure out the optimal number of lags. So let's try that. Let's select the Schwartz information criterion and here input that the maximum number of lags that we would uh, possibly want ever in our estimation is 22. We can change that to anything we'd like and see how many lags does Eviews pick for us. How many lags are optimal? And we see that the optimal number of lags is zero, which is unsurprising because, well, there is very few autocorrelation present in returns in particular because the market is reasonably efficient. But that's a whole different story. So up to this point, we have always got the result that there is no unit root in any of our estimations. Uh, so is it really relevant? Are there unit roots in any types of data? Yes, there are. And uh, this is the very reason why most of the time we use stock returns in modeling and not stock index values. So here is uh, the S&P 500 and uh, its index values for the sample period. And we can test for the unit roots in this. So we can go for the standard unit root test and select the same setting and see that here the uh, augmented Dickey Fuller test statistic is actually lower than the 1% threshold that we want to surpass. And the probability that the unit root is there is actually 7%, which is not enough to pass the 1% confidence interval again. So sometimes and mostly on level data like stock prices or stock indices, there would be unit roots in your data. And the most, you common, the most common and rather useful um, way of combating it is just to take the returns or first differences in your data, depending on what your data is. And here, using eViews, we can actually immediately test what would happen if we take the first difference and detect whether there is a unit root in this process. And Almost magically, we can see how the first difference eliminates the unit root completely, and we get the statistic that is very similar to what we got when we were modeling returns. Obviously, first differencing or figuring out growth rates, which are returns in the setting where you have stock index or stock price data, is conceptually similar, yet mathematically a little bit different, so the results would differ, but not much. So where do we end up with the unit root tests and Dicke Fuller in particular. Well, first of all, before applying any advanced time series modeling, you have to figure out whether your time series are stationary or not, and uh, you need to test whether there is a unit root. Uh, Dicke Fuller test is a very flexible tool. You can uh, check for various processes with or without intercepts or drifts, with or without time trends, and you can use the augmented Dicke Fuller test to account for um, complicated autoregressive lag structure. You can perform all of those tests in Excel. However, st advanced statistical software such as eViews simplifies and fastens the procedure a lot. And uh, unit root tests are the very reason why in econometrics and in statistical modeling of financial markets, we use stock returns unlike stock indices or stock prices. And that's all there is for the Dickerful unit root tests. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, please suggest any further topics on business economics or finance you want me to make videos on. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and stay tuned.